I'm going to talk about uh, humor in education. Now, you might think uh, that this is ridiculous. I mean, after all, schools are serious places, and education is a serious process. But the problem with thinking that schools are always serious places is that they're not. If you take a walk through any school, you'll hear laughter in the hallways. You'll hear it in the classrooms. You'll even hear it in the teacher's lounge. Yet, humor is almost never discussed in school. <laughs> humor, thank you. Humor is um, like sex. Uh, everybody wants to do it, or does it, but no one ever really tells you how. <laughs> but this is all right, because humor isn't important, is it? Well, I'm going to show you that it is. It has to be. All people in all cultures use humor. It's a spark of humanity. Uh, humor relieves tension. It defines relationships. It's often the number one attribute one person seeks out in another. Uh, that's why being accused of not having a sense of humor is like being accused of not really being human, but some sort of alien. It's almost inconceivable that something so, uh, so important, yet so complex, is almost never talked about. Now, let's say that you were some sort of alien. I'm not saying that you're not, but there's a couple I suspect in the crowd today. Um, you might be a little confused by what all these homo sapiens are communicating about. One minute, one of them will say something like, nice shirt, and mean it. And the next minute, one of them will say something like, nice shirt, and mean precisely the opposite. Wouldn't it be better if these homo sapiens always just said exactly what they meant? No, that would be a disaster, possibly the end of the world. <laughs> we, um, we spend a good deal of our time purposely not saying exactly what we mean. And seeing as we consider ourselves to be highly complex and evolved, it's unlikely we'd be doing this simply to make things more confusing for ourselves. It's easy to think that uh, because humor is by definition not serious, that it is therefore not important. But humor is important because it isn't serious. Humor is a superpower. It lets you say one thing, mean another, oh, there he is, uh, and deny them both. <laughs> now, yes, being serious is important. But not being serious is equally important. And these two ways of interacting are actually two different modes of communication, the serious mode and the non-serious mode. I'll start with the serious mode, because after all, I'm giving a very serious talk right now. In the serious mode, you say what you mean. Serious mode is used for things like invitations, instructions, contracts, anytime you want to say something and not have it be open to interpretation. But we often find ourselves in very ambiguous situations, and it's here that we can use the non-serious mode. Uh, in the non-serious mode, things are open to interpretation. The meaning is formed by both the initiator and the receiver, and boundaries can be discovered and tested. The non-serious mode of communication is the mode of play. So, what is play? Play is hard to pin down, but it's been uh, described as behavior that fits the following criteria. It uh, is self-rewarding, it occurs repetitively, it differs from serious forms of behavior, and it does not happen when surrounded by immediate threats. Now, these things could just as easily be describing humor, and that is because humor is itself a form of play. So to understand humor, it helps to understand play first. When an animal is playing, it both is and isn't doing something at the same time. Let's say it's play fighting. It's both uh, attacking and not attacking. It is being aggressive in a pretend way without the intent to harm. Now, when the animal is doing this uh, by itself, that's fine. But as soon as it engages uh, in play with another animal, as soon as it is playing socially, the level of danger suddenly rises because there's always the chance that the other animal will misinterpret its fake attack as a real attack and attack it back and maim or even kill it, which is a terrible way to end a play date. To avoid this, most animals have something called a play face, a special expression that lets the other animal know the attack is only in fun. Animals also have a special 
uh, play sounds that they make. They're usually exaggerated breathing noises. In humans, this manifests itself as smiling and laughter. Uh, these are cues that we use both in regular play and in humorous play behaviors. Uh, but we actually have special cues that, that we reserve just for humor, such as using a special vocal tone for sarcasm. Um, but there's a whole range of these play behaviors. What makes something funny? What is humor? Now, fortunately, I'm not the first one to ask this question. So here are just, here are just a few of the theories. Um, I hope that helps out. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. Instead, I'm simply going to uh, focus on what they all have in common. And what they all have in, in common is they all seem uh, to talk about the importance of some sort of difference between uh, a couple of different items or states of mind or a tension between these. And another word for this is incongruity. And incongruity is the recognition that something doesn't quite fit in either to your expectations or to the environment. Now, incongruity, however, is not enough. So let's say that you're walking home uh, and you notice that there's a dead body on your doorstep. You might not find this funny, <laughs> even though it's probably not what you expected to happen. It's only certain types of incongruities in certain types of situations that lead to humor. So why is this? Well, our ancestors would have encountered uh, all these situations that were possibly, but not certainly dangerous. So they would test this out with play, and if they discovered that it was all right, they would signal this to everyone around through laughing and smiling. This role of humor to, to examine something that isn't quite right is uh, represented in the two definitions of the word funny. When we say something is funny, uh, we can mean it's funny, haha, -ha, or we can mean it's funny, peculiar, or we can mean both of this. So tense but ambiguous situations where your fight or flight response is ready to go, but you're not sure if you need it, th these are great areas for humor. Because uh, it, like, it, that's why if you found a bear in your cave, that wouldn't be funny. But if you found out what you thought was a bear was actually just your old cave person outfit, that would be funny. Because the old cave person outfit wasn't going to kill you, but for a second, you just thought it might. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so, this is, uh, so these are all the kind of uh, the ways that humor manifests itself. So I've, I've talked about uh, the serious and non-serious mode, uh, how humor is based on incongruity, and it's how, how it's only certain types of incongruity that we find funny. So what does this have to do with education? I'm glad you asked. Um, I'll give you an example. So there's a, a class doing some sort of a hands-on discovery uh, exercise. Uh, maybe they're, um, they're building a pioneer village or something like that. And there's a couple of boys uh, who are best of friends at the back. And uh, they're very, they veer off a little bit from what they're supposed to be doing and start pretending to kill each other in amusing ways. One boy goes, uh, bang, headshot, you're dead. And the teacher, uh, the two kids laugh, and then the teacher yells out from across the room, Stop it! That's not funny! And then the boy who said it starts to cry. So, what happened here? Well, perhaps you've heard of the line. This, is a, a, this, this kid just stepped over it. Uh, the line, <laughs> the line is a, a commonly used term in humor, and people are always crossing over it to the horror of one and all. And the line goes right back uh, to, to that dark cave, the moment you realize that what's inside is not uh, a piece of clothing, but is actually a bear, that's when you cross over the line and a potentially humorous situation is suddenly serious. Now, for us modern humans, this line usually manifests itself in social situations, especially when things are on the, right on the border between being inoffensive and offensive. Now, the problem is that things get funnier the closer you get to this line until you cross over it, and then they're not funny at all. <laughs> then it's a bear coming to eat you. So uh, here's, a, here's an example. Here, here's the line. There we go. This is the line that that boy crossed. So 
How could he have missed such a line? It's so obvious. Well, maybe this will help out. There we go. These are just some of the lines that this boy navigates every day in school. There is not one line, but many. Even worse, all of these lines just move around on their own because humor, just like play, involves both the initiator and the receiver. It is completely contextual. It can change on the time of day, the situation, the mood. Uh, for example, the line for this uh, student's teacher could change simply on whether uh, that teacher had a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> yeah, right over there. So uh, now let's just quickly, I'll just focus on, on you and how the line can change for you. So uh, let's pretend that uh, you are giving a speech at a church picnic and you want to put in a couple of jokes. Where would the line be from inoffensive over here to offensive over here? Where would it be? What do you think? Further? This way? This way? Offensive? Inoffensive? It'd probably be somewhere around here. Now, where would the line be if this is inoffensive and offensive over there? Where would it go to if you were then, later on that day, doing a stand-up comedy routine in a late-night a, a late comedy club? This way? Yeah? And then where would it go if the next morning you were meeting someone just for the first time for coffee? You've never met them before. This, this way? And what if that person was your future father-in-law? Right. Now, now what, if, um, what if you later on that day were having drinks and laughs with your very best friend, probably just talking about the really weird couple of days you just had? Which way would the line go then? This way? All the way? All the way? Now, why would it go over here? You'd think you'd want to say nice things to your friend. But paradoxically, it's the people that we know the best that we tend to use the rudest most offensive humor with. Now, this all goes back to that idea of play fighting. The, the thing is, the more you know someone, the more you easily you recognize when their attacks are only in fun and their jokes are only in fun. This moves that line way back here. And so then you really have to push things to get a big laugh. And that's what happened to the student in our example. All he wanted to do was get over to his friend's line and what he did was he leapt right over the teacher's line, right? So, my teacher then pointed him out and uh, made him imply that he was a bad and possibly mean student. And the student cried because uh, he felt embarrassed and confused because all he wanted to do was make his friend laugh. Um, so, is a splat headshot then an appropriate thing to say in a classroom? Well, no. But uh, focusing on whether or not it's funny is a battle you can't win. The kid knows it was funny. His friend laughed. By instead focusing on whether it was appropriate for the situation and why others might not find it funny, you can get to the heart of the situation, which is the importance of understanding others. A teacher who uh, demonstrates a willingness to understand humor can open a whole other avenue of communication. When you show a willingness to play with an uncomfortable situation, uh, other, other difficult topics can be subtly raised. Students, just like all of us, sometimes want to say something without having to come right out and say it. And they will joke about topics they would never uh, deal with directly. One study noticed that the students that they observed uh, talked about sex only through humor when they were in groups. They desperately wanted more information on this very touchy subject, and they really want to know what their peers thought. Uh, and by using humor, they could talk about it at length, all the while pretending not to care. The old saying that a, uh, uh, many a truth spoken in jest is absolutely true. And a teacher who only talks seriously to their students will never hear these truths. Uh, by making students feel comfortable, comfortable using humor, uncomfortable topics can be raised, and an attentive teacher can discover fears and concerns that might not have been uh, brought up otherwise. And this could be the starting point for a more serious conversation. Humor is a way in. Now, unfortunately, humor is not always used in such a positive way. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned before, humor is a superpower. It lets you say one thing, mean another, and deny them both. And this can make it a, a great way to interact with students in certain situations. It also makes it the perfect tool for bullying. And because of the effect bullying has on our schools, I just want to end my talk by quickly showing the role that humor plays in this. Now, many bullies use humor very directly. And the jokes they make at the expense of their victim are quite obviously insults. But more socially sophisticated bullies use humor in more subtle ways. 
they can create social groups with in-jokes that only the members understand, and that way they isolate all the others outside. They can do things like uh, create funny rumors about other students, or create nicknames that stick. All of these things could be very hurtful to the victim without ever sounding nearly as aggressive as the BAM headshot joke those two friends had before. It could be as simple as making some, uh, fun of somebody's hair, and this innocuousness of it all allows the bully to say that it was only in fun. So then how do you deal with humor and bullying? Well, one potential thing you could do is you could outlaw any type of humor that sounded potentially offensive. You could even try to ban sarcasm, because this is often considered to be an aggressive form of humor. Um, these black and white solutions are very appealing, but they just have one little problem. Humor doesn't work this way. You see, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, like there's some bullies do use aggressive sounding humor, but it's also used by people who are actually friends. And an innocent joke can actually be very damaging given the particular relationship between a bully and a victim. So how can you tell if humor is being used to attack? With humor, it's the intent, not the content, that really matters. Uh, the most easiest thing to, to do is to remember that humor is a form of play. So if a kid has been made a subject of a joke and it appears that they're not expected to respond or that they can't respond, they're most likely being laughed at and not with. Uh, humor is like uh, kicking a ball. Two kids kicking a ball to each other is fun. One kid kicking another like a ball is abuse. So at the end of the day, humor is a rich, complicated, and profoundly strange thing. But it dominates our social world. Just think about your friends. You probably all share a similar sense of humor. And education is a very social process. Uh, by giving teachers and students a better understanding of how humor works, we can encourage it in its use to communicate and bond and be able to separate inappropriate but innocent humor from humor that is used to hurt others. Humor is a funny thing. It's also an important one. Thank you.